And then in 2005, uh, you were awarded the Victoria Cross for two uh, acts of bravery. So, uh, you, you, can you tell me a little bit about both situations and how that happened? Well, I could tell you about one situation clearly as it happened on Fall on the Ground. The second one, I can't remember. So the end of the first one, there's a six-week gap as well. I can't tell you what happened between them. But I could mention what the guy said to me. Mm -hmm. But what happened on the 1st of uh, May 2004, I was on QRF. QRF meant Quick Reaction Force with my platoon. Platoon of 29, 27 to 30 soldiers. We had a foot patrol on the ground that all day patrolling on foot. So we knew that it was only a matter of time for something to happen because the, the environment was pretty hostile. So the commander decided that we're going to go between camp and the guys on the ground, halfway between, so that if anything happened, we could react quicker. So we went and we carried a VCP, vehicle checkpoint, halfway between the camp and the guys on the ground. And within about 12 minutes, we were tasked to assist them because someone been shot. We was given a proven route to get into the contact where the guys was. So I know was the lead driver of the pack. So I was leading the, the platoon into that um, contact to get a casualty out. On the way in, the route was blocked. So I stopped the vehicle and I said to the boss, what are we going to do now? Because I know I don't want to drive over that obstacle. He said to me, there is a alternative route on the, on the left of me. Just take that route. We'll get back onto the proven route. Well, with no question asked, and I just carry on carry on driving, and that route we take is more or less going wrong a huge roundabout, maybe about 100 meters in width going wrong to come back onto the proven route. And I had a big explosion. I didn't know where it came from and where it went. So I called out to the boss and I said, boss, what happened? No response. So what I did, I moved forward about three to, to seven meters just to get out of that line of fire, if it was me, because I didn't know if it was me that get hit. And then it happened again. Again, I called out to the boss, no response. And that happened quite a few times. Before I realized that I had no communication with anyone in the vehicle, the vehicle was on fire, and I ran out of space. End up now in the middle of an ambush with 7 0.62, maybe 50 caliber rocky propel grenade coming from all different directions. Rooftop, alleyways, you name it, it's coming. And I said to myself, I'm not going to die here. I'm going to get out and go into hardcover. And I saw my route out to the right of me. I saw my route. In the, ahead, I could not have go because there was a huge wall blocking that road where I had to go forward. And then the route I had to take to get on back onto the proven route was blocked as well. But that's where I could have taken my hard cover. And <laughs> I look at the vehicle, I look at where I had to go, and I said to myself again, I can't leave the guys behind. Because although I don't know if they're alive or in the, if they're in the vehicle, I said to myself, I can't leave them behind. Because they all will die, because the vehicle will blow up at any point. So I decided to stay with them and drive the, try to drive the vehicle back to camp. So what I do now, I try moving the wall in front of me. With the, I was driving a warrior. And the warrior is just a smaller version to a tank. It's huge power. I could move the wall. I could drive through this building on a normal day. But I could not have moved the wall because the engine was on fire and I was losing power, seriously losing power. So at that point, I was on the left-hand side of the wall. I decided now I'm going to turn the vehicle and go over to the right-hand side. Don't ask me why I did that, but I decided to. So I turned the vehicle over and I moved over to the, the right-hand side of the wall. But whilst I was doing that, I was actually scared. I was not scared of dying or being shot or being blown up. I was worried that the vehicle now been hit so many times. And I don't know where the vehicle get hit. So by turning the vehicle, by locking one truck and spinning the other one, too, too much tension on one truck would actually cause me to lose the truck if the truck get hit. So that's what I was worried about. So I decided now to move up to the wall when I did get the vehicle to turn and I pushed the wall from one end, push it open like a door, and I had enough space 
to drive the vehicle through. Still don't know if anyone is alive and the vehicle is on fire. I started driving the vehicle through that entrance, then I saw a mine sitting in the road. And again, I stopped because I knew what was going to happen if I drive over it. But then I said to myself, this mine is a 50-50. And what was happening was 100% because he was not stopping. But the only way I could get the vehicle out or get the rest of the platoon behind me out is to set off the mine. So I decided to drive over the mine. I knew when that mine go off, I was going to die. Because I was sitting next to the engine, the engine and then me, and the mine is right at the front. So what I decided to do is place the big lump of metal, the engine, over the mine. So the engine going to take most of the blast. Yes, I will get killed, but the guys at the back, I was hoping they was going to be okay. And the, the vehicle, the route would clear, the vehicle from behind would pick the guys up and carry on. Well, I did went over the mine. Did it went off? I can't tell you. Because there was so much explosion. Um, now I'm driving down this huge open road. Again, I didn't know where I was going. I knew I was going deeper into the killing zone. And in the distance, I saw something coming towards me. I didn't know what it was, but it was not moving away from me. I had the hatch open because my tunnel, driver's tunnel, was full up of smoke from when the vehicle was burning. So I, I had the hatch open. I decided now I'm going to close the hatch because whatever was coming was not moving away from me. I pulled the hatch closed, and as soon as I pulled it closed, I didn't manage to lock it. It blown off in my hand. And I realized it was a rocky purple grenade coming directly at my head. So now I have no hatch cover and this much sticking out to the enemy, still under heavy machine gun fire. And again, I didn't know where I was going, but I continued driving. I turned left, I turned right, still driving. And then I came to this building named Simic House where we had a company of soldiers looking after this building. And I saw the rest of the, the company. And I was pretty happy. I was extremely happy to know I was not by myself. But because I had no communication, I could not have speak to anyone. So what I did, I drove my vehicle into someone else's vehicle to get their attention and ask for help. They said, okay. And I closed the hatchback. And I'm sitting there in the middle of the ambush, still under heavy machine gun fire. No one coming to help me. I was not sitting for long. I was only sitting for about 30 seconds to maybe a minute tops. But that, 30 seconds to a minute seems like a long time. three days. The, the minute could be like a whole week because my brain was processing information 200 miles per hour. So everything around me was slow. And the best way to describe that, I actually saw that grenade coming at my head. I didn't know it was a grenade, but I saw it coming. And that's how quick my brain was processing information. I saw bullet traveling. In real life, you don't see bullet travel. You see trace of bullet. So that's why that 30 seconds to a minute seems so long. So now I'm speaking to myself. No one is coming to help me. What I'm doing sitting in the driver's seat. So I get out of the driver's seat and I lie in front of the vehicle to take over so I don't get shot. I'm thinking no, I need to get on top of the vehicle to make sure the two guys on the top is okay. But the vehicle was on fire and I was, the vehicle was under heavy machine gun fire as well. So I couldn't come up with no idea how I was, how I was gonna get on top of the vehicle which is about six feet in height, to check the guys. We'd all been burnt and we'd all been shot. So I just went for it. I put my rifle on my back and I run up on top of the vehicle, run through the fire. First person I saw was my boss. He was unconscious, down inside the Tarek in the gun. Pull him out, put him on my back, carry him down, carry him into safety through the fire, come back again. Did the same thing with the gunner, into safety. Then I went around the back of the, the vehicle there was four guys in the back, individually carried them into safety. Then checked the other vehicles for casualty, get them into safety. And then I went back and sit in the burning vehicle. This is where you're getting shot at and everything else. Yeah, everything was still happening. <laughs> I was, the enemy was still shooting at me. And uh, I don't know why they were shooting at me. I guess they wanted to kill me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I can't say. It. I, I don't know. They were shooting at me. Um, so now I went back into the burning vehicle. People at that point might think I'm crazy. I'm not crazy. The reason why I went back into the burning vehicle, I didn't want the vehicle to end up in the enemy hands. And I was willing to drive the vehicle back under he heavy machine gun fire and on fire as well, knowing that it was going to blow up any minute. I just didn't want the intelligence to end up in the enemy hands. 
I drove the vehicle for about 300 meters and I realized I couldn't make it. So then I drove it down the side of the river, down in the river bank on the side of Simic House, went again through the fire, disabled the weapon system, then go back through the driver's seat, disable the vehicle, and then I get myself into safety. Sit in the back of a vehicle, and the last thing I remember was someone saying to me, removing my helmet from my head, and saying to me, Harry, Harry, stay with me.